All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. And uh, once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Barshim Yahshai, Barshim Rakar Kadash. All praises and glories definitely do. So I'm going to continue with the series 10 Things the Wacky Tacky Christian Does Not Understand About the Heavenly Father. Now, so far, I'm up to part five. The last video I did was part four. The topic of part four was he created evil. And I go into the scriptures to prove that the Heavenly Father indeed does create evil. So if you want to understand about that, you would want to watch that video, part four. Now, let's go to part five. As you see here, 10 things the wacky tacky Christian does not understand about the Heavenly Father. Part 5 is He kills. He kills. It's very straightforward. And the scriptures are very clear on this. The Heavenly Father is the one that does the killing. The issues of death come from the Heavenly Father. Let's begin with Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. And once again, this is the kind of video that doesn't have to take long. You know, you bring out a few scriptures which will prove the point that the Heavenly Father indeed does kill. So if somebody dies a violent death, the Heavenly Father sanctioned that action. All right, this is the book of Deuteronomy 32 and 39. It says this. Now, this is the Heavenly Father speaking to his man Moses, right? Remember Amos, the third chapter the seventh verse, surely the Lord God will do nothing, which his name is Yahweh, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So Moses was one of his prophets that he revealed a lot of secrets to, a lot of intimate secrets to. One of them being the fact that he kills. Okay, this is Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See now that I, even I am he, this is the Heavenly Father speaking to Moses, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. So if you get a disease, really, that's the Heavenly Father. It's punishment of the Heavenly Father. And we get punished. Why? Because of violating his law. Okay, it's the same thing with the so-called white man, the Edomite that we're under in captivity. If you violate the Edomite's law, the Edomite seeks to punish you. Well, it's no different with the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father has a set of rules laws, statutes, commandments, and if you violate them, you receive a punishment. Now, some punishments are not as severe, some punishments are not as severe as other punishments, but nevertheless, if you violate the Heavenly Father's law in any way possible, you receive a punishment. And what is sin? Sin is violation of the Heavenly Father's law. 1 John 3 and 4. Sin is a transgression of the law. So when you commit sins, you receive a punishment for those sins. All right. One of the parts that I featured was slavery, how the Heavenly Father created slavery. Slavery was, a, in reality, was a punishment to the nation of Israel for us violating the Heavenly Father's laws, statutes, and commandments. The main infraction being worshiping other gods, which the Heavenly Father already said he's a jealous God. All right. So... Once you understand these concepts, you begin these concepts, you begin to understand the Heavenly Father in his true nature, not what you've been taught by plantation Christianity. Okay? Which is why we well the, the term really first started with Elder Pastor, the term wacky tacky Christian. The reason why Apost Elder Pastor said he called them wacky tacky Christians is because of, of the nonsense that they believe in. As in plantation Christianity. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. You know, in basic math, if you if you add two and two and you come up with five or you come up with seven or you come up with three, then you know it's not the truth. Two and two is four. OK, two and two is four. So with plantation Christianity, the numbers don't add up. So it ain't the truth. If the numbers don't add up, it's not the truth. It's very simple. So. <clears throat> Excuse me, Deuteronomy 32, 39, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. This is the Heavenly Father speaking, I kill and I make alive. 
I wound and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Right, so if your spirit is required to go before the throne of the Heavenly Father, that's something called death, then as the Apostle Paul said, no one can resist his will. That is written, all right? So <clears throat> there you go. Um, the 40th verse, for I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, now I draw your attention to the word wet. It, when you look that word up, it means to sharpen. Okay, so the Heavenly Father is very deadly with his judgments. Okay, the, the Heavenly Father is very meticulous with his judgments. Okay, and again, we receive judgments. Why? Because of our sins. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, see, wet, meaning sharpen. Like I said, the Heavenly Father is very meticulous with his judgment. I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. What's the sign that you hate the Heavenly Father? You're not keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay, you're sinning at will. Okay, I will make mine arrows drunk with blood. There you go. <laughs> That's judgment. And my sword shall devour flesh. So, essentially, who does the killing? The Heavenly Father does, man. And that's a byproduct, a byproduct of his judgment. So next time you hear of someone who die a horrific death, you got to think, the first thing you should think is, well, damn, what did that person do? Not only in the life that that person was living when he got killed or she got killed, their past lives. We know that the Heavenly Father creates reincarnation. Reincarnation is a, is a very real concept concerning the Heavenly Father. All of us have been reincarnated many times. And that, you know, every time you're reincarnated back into the planet Earth, you, you're back on, on the Earth to serve your judgment. That's why in the book of Ecclesiastes 3 and 16, what does it say? The Earth is the place of judgment. This is where we serve our judgment for the, for the sins that we have committed. Okay, the reason why we're under these curses in Deuteronomy the 20th chapter is, is because of the sins we committed in our past. It was Moses that told us, look, if you, as a matter of fact, we're in Deuteronomy, right? Let's just go a few chapters back. Deuteronomy 28 and 15 tells you why we catch in hell in this society, catch in hell in general. Now, when Yahweh Shai comes and he changes us, we're not gonna catch hell anymore. That's gonna be a thing of the past. But why are we catching hell now? We're catching hell now because of what we did in the past i mean if you can't see that then i, I don't know what to tell you you know they're they're israelites uh goofy dudes <laughs> real goofy all right real dusty as they say that just can't get the concept of reincarnation okay why are we sit why are we um suffering for what why are we suffering in this life we're suffering because of what we did in our past man okay this is uh deuteronomy 28 and 15 what does it say here the subheaded consequences of disobedience but it shall come to pass meaning it's going to happen at the time it was written moses was saying it's going to happen and it, and it's and it's happened we're in that time period now but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, which his name is Yahweh, to observe to do all his commandments, see, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now, are we not under the curses? Yes, we are. The question is why? Why are we under these curses? Why are we suffering these curses? Because of what we did in the past. As in what? As in violate, continually violate the Heavenly Father's laws, statutes, commandments, which is called sin, by the way. Okay? And remember, the, the planet Earth is the place of judgment. So back then, we, we, we lived that life, we sinned, we died, we went back. You know, it tells you what happened in the scripture. It tells you what happened when you die. You go back before, before the throne of the Heavenly Father, you receive your judgment. Then you come back on the planet Earth to serve your judgment. This is why it's called the place of judgment, Ecclesiastes 3 and 16. That's how it works. That is the very definition of reincarnation. I already covered that topic, so I'm not going to 
go into it, all right? I'm going to stick to the topic at hand. The Heavenly Father kills. Okay, so let's get back to Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Right, one more time. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal, and there is there any that can deliver out of my hand. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so that was uh, a. <coughs> Excuse me. That was um, Deuteronomy 32 and 39, right? Let's go to the book of uh, Psalms 68 and 20. <coughs> Psalm 68 and 20. It says, um, He that is our, our power is the power of salvation. And unto God the Lord, which his name is Yahweh. I got to keep saying that. We don't, we don't like saying the term God. We certainly don't like saying the term Jesus. <laughs> All right. And Christ. Those, those are incorrect uh, titles. Okay, we like calling the Heavenly Father by his proper name, which his name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. All right, so <clears throat> Psalm 68 and 20, he that is our power is the power of salvation and unto Yahweh belong the issues from death. Unto Yahweh belong the issues from death. And what's the definition of that? Kill. Okay. So, once again, if someone should die, that's the Heavenly Father putting the hit out on them. In other words, the Heavenly Father is the ultimate hit man, <laughs> if you want to look at it that way. The issues of death come from Him. Okay. Um... I want to get one more scripture. And I'm thinking of the scripture now. Okay, I think I know how to get it. I'm trying to word it so I can find it for you. This is the book of uh, Luke 12 and 20. Well, let me start at the uh, 16th verse. Luke 12 and 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain man... This is the Awashai teaching a parable, right? The ground of a certain man, rich man, brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and will and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Right, so this is a person with the mindset of I'm going to live life. I got all this goods. I'm rich. I'm rich, biatch. No, inside joke. I'm rich, right? So I'm going to live my life. Now, here's the point. It says, but the heavenly father said unto him, thou fool, you fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. What does that mean? I mean, Meaning you're going to die, man. I require your spirit to come before me. I require your spirit to leave its leave that body, that, that bow dig, that house. That's what the word body means. That was made out of the ground. I require your spirit to leave that abode and come before me here in the spirit world. What is that called, people? Death. So once again, this scripture proves the most high created killing. All right, the Most High is the author of death. Okay, but the Heavenly Father said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? 
okay so the point is the heavenly father when you see someone die or you hear of someone die just think of it the heavenly father required that person's spirit to come before him so that spirit could be judged for what it did in the body it was a time of judgment okay and that essentially that's what death is it's a time of judgment because as soon as you die you go right before the throne as a matter of fact i keep saying it let me show you what i'm talking about second corinthians the fifth chapter and a lot of people don't know what happens during the time of death well let me read it to you and th these are the words of the apostle paul he was speaking to the israelites in corinth he said <clears throat> he said uh second corinthians 5 and 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai. Because, yeah, because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, has given all judgment to Yahweh Shai. So when we die, we must appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai. That's why when I read Luke 12 and 20, what does it say there? And Yahweh Shai is saying this. These words are written in red. Yahweh Shai, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. But the Heavenly Father said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. All right, this night thy, sh thy soul shall be required of thee. So what happens? That person goes before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he have done, whether it be good or evil. And that person is sent back to the planet Earth through something called birth. That person's parents create the house for his, his or hers her body and they live their life on the planet earth and they receive their next judgment and the process repeats itself over and over again that's why it's called generation it happens over and over again that's the very definition of reincarnation regeneration there are those that think regeneration is different from reincarnation that's because they don't know the meaning of words okay regeneration is reincarnation and reincarnation is regeneration okay and like i said that's a topic i already dealt with but pretty much i'm going to end the video there this has been part number five of bear with me for a minute, part number five of ten things the wacky tacky christian does not understand about the heavenly father okay so in the next video it will be part six he hates. That'll be part six. So hopefully you were edified on to the next one.